was gearing up for a quiet stream, just watching some PMQs, just shooting the shit, and turns out all hell has broken loose. So while a Bravman has fired shit off, there are letters going into the 1922 committee, and now Robert Jenrick has resigned. I don't believe it. Robert Jenrick, the man he's, who is apparently now, right? Apparently, Robert Jenrick is too nasty for the Rwandan government. So, turns out that potentially the Rwandan government might pull out of the deal if it doesn't adhere to international law. Uh, Paul Brand from ITV has pointed out that it's hugely problematic and potentially humiliating for the government if Rwanda doesn't think that the deal is adhering enough to international law. They think it might be too toxic. So this is, this is the statement, apparently. It has always been important to both Rwanda and the UK that our rule of law partnership meets the highest standards of international law and places obligations on the, both the UK and Rwanda to act lawfully. Without lawful behaviour by the UK, Rwanda would not be able to continue with the Migration and Economic Development Partnership. Minister Bruta, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Absolutely hilarious to me that what might actually end all of this isn't the European Convention on Human Rights. It's not the lefty lawyers. It's not the charities. It's the Rwandan government who might terminate the deal if it doesn't meet international law. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. We are now less adhering to international law than, than the Rwandan government. And also apparently Robert Jenrick is now to their right as well. Then again, I guess Robert Jenrick is the man who paints over children's murals in immigration detention centres. But to be fair, that is Robert Jenrick admitting that he is further to the right. Our entire government admitting that they're to the right of Paul Kagame and then Robert Jenrick is to the right even further even more draconian than the government who are more draconian than Rwanda and again Rwandan government is headed by a man Paul Kagame a man who unalived refugees in eastern Congo during the first Congo war this is how ridiculous our current government is they're too nasty for even the man who made refugees and it's got to the point where current piece of legislation is the one which the Rwanda government have quibbles on in case it doesn't adhere to international law the current government have watered it down to try and make sure that they can pass it by having some kind of treaty even though Rwanda looks like that looks like they might pull out and then after that Robert Jenrick is still not happy with him still happy with and is resigning potentially because of for political reasons internally within the party it's possible that his desire to jettison himself from the cabinet was spurred on by Suella Bravman's speech earlier on today, where she essentially said that they were going to lose the election if they didn't sort Rwanda out. I'm like, no, you're going to lose the election because people can't pay their bills and their mortgages are too expensive, right? You continually focusing on the Rwanda plan is why people are, think your government isn't serious, mostly because it's not, because it isn't serious. In fact, your failures will entirely be economic and people seeing you not take those economic concerns seriously is what's tanking you in the polls whilst you while you fumble about with these stupid these stupid vice signaling attempts with stuff like the Rwanda deal. <laughs> But to be fair, Suella Bravman is clearly setting out her stall for a future leadership challenge post-election, right? She doesn't want to be in the cabinet. She doesn't want to be the leader. She wants somebody else to fall on their sword at the next election. Although plenty of other Conservative MPs who are in less safe seats than hers want to replace Rishi Sunak, hence why the letters are all going into the 1922 committee. Who apparently has been briefed by Rishi Sunak this evening. Apparently Rishi Sunak briefed the 1922 committee this evening to discuss what was going on with the Rwanda deal, right? Because of James Cleverly signing the treaty, yeah, exactly. That Rwanda now feel like they might be having a little bit of a cold feet over. So Swella Bravman wants them to run on this kind of watered down plan, potentially, and then come in later, swoop in, and say, actually, the real reason why we lost was because we weren't far right enough. So we need to go further right and completely ignore the economy even further and make yourself look even less serious as a government, which will then happen after they lose the election, which at this point they probably have to realise they're going to lose anyway. An attempt to remove Sunak and replace with somebody else won't do anything. I mean, to be fair, they probably have nothing to lose. He has got minus 40% approval rating. He was supposed to be for the one promising stability, promising security, and he's done none of those things. In fact, all he's looked at is like a complete bull in a china shop, tearing up pieces of legislation that were promised in the manifesto, looking like he doesn't know what he's doing, saying dumb stuff about seven bins and meat taxes, looking like an incredibly unserious individual. And not only unserious in terms of policy, but completely out of touch, given the comments that he's made, the things that he said on the campaign trail about moving money out of deprived urban areas, not knowing any working class people, not knowing how to use the 
a bloody debit card, right? It's so clear that he's completely out of his depth, and they probably they probably have nothing else to lose other than just to jettison him and replace him with someone else because they can't they can't do much worse than twenty points behind, losing votes to Reform UK, losing votes to Labour, losing votes to the Lib Dems, right? There's nothing else they can do. They might as well replace him at this point. But who wants the job? Who wants to lead them into the next election and potentially just get completely humiliated? Who wants to be the person to fall on this? Well, nobody wants to because you will be blamed for it regardless about the fact that really and truly George Osborne and Liz Truss really to blame for most of their economic woes and most of their electoral woes at the moment. Like, there's nothing that they can do really and truly. But what would be even funnier is if they do start putting in letters in the 1922 committee and Rishi Kusunak calls a snap election to save his own skin. Now that would be incredibly funny if we have like a winter election for the Conservative Party because Rishi Sunak wants to make sure that he doesn't get removed before the election so that he actually fights it before he gets ousted, right? Oh my god, everything is just so funny. Like what, what timeline is? What time are you living in? at this point in time. I probably won't do much editing on this segment because I'm just splurting out thoughts here, but I just, it, it we, truly is like the banter timeline never finishes. Every single time you think, okay, the banter timeline is over. Maybe we'll have some things approaching normalcy. No, no, no. Things just get even more normal. And there's another government collapse. There's another rebellion. There's another part of this kind of domestic situation going on between internal members of the Conservative Party. It just gets played out in public through the lens of all of these people within like the mainstream media. All of their contacts, all of their leads, just leaking all of this stuff coming out of the internal Conservative Party offices. Oh my god. It's the perfect time to be a political commentator and a political streamer because it never stops. It just keeps going. I hope people who are watching this know this is what the Conservatives are always like, right? It's always this internal stuff. It's always a mess. They very rarely actually pull themselves together enough. I mean, it happened with Thatcher. It happened with Cameron. It happened with May. It happened with Johnson. It happened with Truss. And it's happening with Sunak. Every time, there's just never, ever any sense of normalcy going on in the Conservative Party. And then they'll, they'll just do what they did after John Major failed. They'll do. They'll have another, another 97 moment where they'll just have terrible leader after terrible leader after terrible leader thinking that they need to take some kind of specific position to be able to win votes when it's clear it's clear what the position they need to do to win votes which is just to promise to spend money on bloody hospitals which they haven't been doing and they've promised even more austerity which people don't want either it's just a real comedy of errors but this election winning juggernaut they've won more elections than any other political party on the face of the planet in history and they cannot just get themselves together to know how to run a country the, the great conservative party one again this this absolute of leviathan of electoral politics coming apart at the seams over, over a, like a deportation scheme to rwanda right and the fact that they kind of set their stake on the rwanda plan is they're like one thing rather than just you know, open up safe and legal routes. And then all of this kind of prevaricating over other migration policy to try and distract people from Rwanda, which is a distraction from economic policy, which is a distraction from everything else that's going on internally. I, I just, uh, how have we got to this point? And how are we allowed to get to this point? Again, and people kept telling you, right? Oh, we can't have Boris Johnson in charge because Jeremy Corbyn won't be able to run the country. And I'm like, yeah, that went well, didn't it? That went well. Where's the, I will take chaos with Ed Miliband to go, please. One chaos with Ed Miliband, please. Miliband, please. The coalition of chaos with Jeremy Corbyn in 2017. That's what we were told. Incredible. Love it. We are certainly looking into all of those liberal commentators who said that, you know, the safe pairs of hands would be the Tories against like the chaos of Corbyn. Suddenly all comes crashing down, doesn't it? <laughs> Boris's only job was to keep Corbyn out according to coming. Yep, I mean, we, we know exactly what it was, right? That these people didn't really care what happened, who was completely unfit to leave the country, that was continually put into office. Just like absolute reams and reams of people unfit to run the country, just injected into office so the British establishment wouldn't have to deal with anything slightly to the left of Gerhard Schroeder. And here we are, here we are, seven bins and all. We are here at the point where Rishi Sunak might be ousted. We might have the fourth prime minister in a single electoral cycle. And again, I think they probably should do it. They've got nothing else to do. They've not, they've tanked in the polls. Rishi Sunak's continued to lose votes. At no point since he became prime minister after taking over from this trust, at no point in any of that period has he gone up in the polls. He's consistently sunk, consistently gone down. He's never increased the polling and he's losing votes to literally every single side of the political spectrum. All the normals are all out voting for Labour because that's the position they've taken of the previous, you know, sensible governance, you know, managerial neoliberalism. So all of the sensible types have moved over to Labour. All of like the progressive neoliberals have all drifted over to the Lib Dems because they want high house prices, but they hate all of like the Rwanda shtick. 
They've all moved up to the Lib Dems and like the Southwest. And everybody who's like one of the far right nut jobs, they've all moved to reform UK. There's nobody left apart from retirees who've paid off their house and have really lucrative private pensions. And also who have plenty of second properties that have to worry about the fact that their pension provision has also been reduced by this trust. Like this is the only group that they have left, just like over 70s with no mortgages. Everybody else all just left. There's nobody left voting Tory. So you might as well have another throw of the dice. Screw it. Why not? Why not? Why not just at least have another prime minister? Who knows? Who knows what would happen? But again, who would they choose? Who would even bother wanting to run other than somebody who just to say that they were prime minister for five minutes? I think, honestly, they should just call the snap election. Just get it over with. Get us out of our misery. I don't even want Starmer to be prime minister. I don't give a shit whether Starmer's prime minister or not. I just, I'm sad. I, I pity. I pity this kind of flailing conservative corpse just continually humiliating itself right? Just continually making the entire public lose faith in democracy, lose faith in our politicians. Just get it over with. Just admit defeat. Call the election, you know? Let Starmer be the miserable piece of shit in charge of the country who everybody hates. It can't hurt to let somebody else be at the, uh, at the, uh, the mercy of the nation's ire for all of the political failures of this country. Plus, you know, a uh, potential future election coming anytime soon would be an ideal time for us to campaign for the green party to try and shift the conversation on this stuff whilst labor are looking a little bit weak in terms of things like foreign policy over gaza and all of this stuff about thatcher that's been going on and keir starmer's lurch to the right whilst actually a council are just just effective to the green party so i say bring on an election and not just because it means i can do loads of coverage every day and get loads of new subscribers <laughs> but even so like <laughs> just, just, just get over it just get it over with there's no point in sticking around James O'Brien having a diatribe today about the incompetence of Boris in the COVID inquiry and still managed to complain that there was no real alternative in 2019. I mean, these, this is how these people think, right? Like, genuinely. I mean, the fact that James O'Brien had a whole chapter of his book about how Corbyn broke Britain, but Campbell and Blair didn't get a look in just tells you the kind of dumb opinions that that idea has. You genuinely can't believe that they think that Rwanda will win the election. Really, they know that people will forget about it once it's out of the news and hasn't changed their lives in any material way. Yep, literally. Literally, the, these people are completely delusional in the Conservative Party. They just don't realise because they've never lived like normal normal lives that normal people live. They've never had to deal with any kind of economic precarity, like people are currently feeling with mortgage payments, like people are currently feeling with the cost of living, putting food on their kids' plates. Right? They've never had to deal with that. So they, they just cannot comprehend the idea. They cannot comprehend the idea that that would be a driving force behind why people would be turning away from them, just this dramatic drop in living standards. And it's just funny to watch them flail around just trying to, oh, it's about legal migration, it's about illegal migration, oh, it's about wokery, it's about trans kids. Like, no, people just want to be able to pay the bloody bills. It's about the economy, stupid. And they're failing on that. The only person who had success on the economy was Boris Johnson. And he's the one who's looking like a frightened child in the COVID inquiry, whilst admitting that he was the person who was patient zero in terms of the amount of widespread death that we saw over the coronavirus pandemic. There's just, there's nobody. There's nobody with any redeeming qualities throughout the Conservative Party. You know what? You know who I'm, I think of at this moment? You know who really reminds me of this moment? It was Charles Walker MP during the Liz Truss debacle when there was like this, um, this mosh pit essentially that happened in the House of Commons getting through like the confidence vote that wasn't a confidence vote. And it was like, it's an absolute shambles and a disgrace. Let me bring up the clip because it's a funny, it's a funny little clip. And I think this is probably how Charles Walker MP feels right now as well. Uh, I'm sorry, it's very difficult to convey. You look just furious about this. I am, I am. I've had enough. I've had enough of talentless people um, putting their tick in the right box, not because it's in the national interest, but because it's in their own personal interest to achieve ministerial position. And I, and I know I speak for hundreds of backbenchers who right now um, are worrying for their constituents all the time, but now worrying about their own personal circumstances because there is nothing as X as an ex MP. Absolutely roasted. And it all applies the same right now. Is it okay to say you think that Penny Morden wouldn't be too bad? I mean, she's definitely the least bad of the bunch, but we all saw the stand up and fight speech. She's just as much of a nut job as the rest of them. She just pretends to be trans inclusive and then forgets her principles when he realizes she can't become prime minister off the back of being trans inclusive. The Conservative Party membership are just absolute demons. So yeah, I just, they just, there's nothing they can do. It's over. It's completely over. Just call the election, get over with, bring in Starmer. I'll have red team manage to climb instead of blue team manage to climb. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.